Good evening, everyone. Good evening. How are you all, guys? How are you all? Royal Ratna, Aditya Gawade, Insha Sheikh, Karan Raj, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Salim Ansari. Everyone, good evening. Am I audible, guys? Am I audible to all of you? The battery bite could change. Right. Am I visible also, right? Very good. Uh, good evening, all of you. So, good time to start. I think we have sufficient audience over here. Okay. So, yesterday we were discussing regarding uh, this thing. Yesterday we were discussing regarding the staph epidermidus as well as staph saprophyticus. I was telling you staph epidermidus mainly causes endocarditis, whereas staph saprophyticus mainly causes urinary tract infection in sexually active women. Okay, sexually active women. So till here, you all understood yesterday, right? So, Uh, Kajal, recorded lectures are getting uploaded on YouTube, right? So today, 5 o'clock, one lecture will be uploaded. Tomorrow, it will be uploaded. Uh, so these lectures will be uploaded continuously. So it will be uploaded, don't worry. Part-wise, every day I can upload. In a single day, I can't upload all the videos, right? It doesn't look good. So every day I have to upload one, one video. Only then the reach will be good, basically. Okay, right. So yesterday we were discussing that and today, today what we shall discuss, again I have put down the same classification over here, no change here. Gram positive bacteria are divided into bacilli, cocci as well as branching filaments. Cocci are, most of them are aerobic, okay. These aerobic cocci are based upon the catalase, they are divided into catalase positive, catalase negative. Catalase positive are staphylococci, catalase positive are staphylococci and catalase negative are usually streptococci. So in staphylococci, we, you remember staphylococci may have discussed kiya, coagulase positive, COPS and coagulase negative that is cons, you remember that right? Coagulase positive staphylococci, coagulase negative staphylococci. Now we shall be discussing about streptococci. In streptococci, there are three types of hemolysis. You divide the bacteria based upon three different types of hemolysis. One is called as alpha hemolysis, one is called as beta hemolysis, and one is called as gamma hemolysis. Okay. So alpha hemolysis is also called as green hemolysis. Because when you look at the agar plate, it looks green. This is green hemolysis. Acha, ye bata, sir, green hemolysis kyu? The reason why there is green hemolysis is hemolysis matlab kya? You tell me what is hemolysis. Hemolysis is breakdown of RBC. When RBC is broken down, bilirubin is released. All of you know. Bilirubin is which color? Not bilirubin. First, you know what is released? Bilveridin is released. Right? Bilveridin is which color? Green color. So that is the reason why the hemolysis is green. And beta hemolysis is complete hemolysis. And gamma hemolysis is incomplete hemolysis. Okay? First, we shall be discussing on the first important hemolysis. That is our alpha hemolysis over here okay first we shall be discussing about alpha hemolysis now coming to this alpha hemolysis what are the important things you need to know give me a second what 
what are the important things you need to know so alpha hemolysis within this alpha hemolysis also you divide guys all of you can look at all of your comments now yesterday there was some problem now where is it sorted very good so alpha hemolysis is also divided into two different types based upon what based upon optochin optochin kya hota hai maine kya bola tha i told you basitracin you remember yesterday's class you put a tablet of basitracin there is zone of inhibition right so either you put basitracin or you put optochin okay both of them are same what is the third one i told you basitracin optochin and another one answer fast i told you one is basitracin one is optochin novo biosin very good nishoka novo biosin all these are antibiotic tablets only you put it in the center if the bacteria is dying there it is sensitive if the bacteria is not dying it is resistant so optochin also same mechanism so based upon that we divide into optochin resistant aur dusra kya hai optochin sensitive optochin resistant and optochin sensitive okay now when it is optochin resistant you call this as viridens streptococci viridens viridian streptococci viridian streptococci when it is optochin sensitive that is your streptococcus pneumonia all of you know about this streptococcus pneumonia very well right so this is about your streptococcus pneumonia now out of these two one very important point that is asked in the exams is that streptococcus streptococcus pneumonia is encapsulated what is it encapsulated encapsulated matlab kya it is surrounded with a capsule whereas viridian streptococci is unencapsulated it means it does not have a capsule unencapsulated unencapsulated so one is encapsulated another one is unencapsulated till here you are clear next important thing you need to know is that if you look at the shape of the streptococci cocci cocci in the sense they are circular shape so actually these streptococci are in the form of pairs okay ye dekho this type of uh, structure you call it as lanceolate diplococci what is this structure you called as lanceolate diplococci ye dekho look at the structure lanceolate diplococci here also lanceolate diplococci you see this one also lanceolate diplococci here also you see lanceolate diplococci okay so if this picture comes in the exam i don't think so it is very difficult for you to answer the question yes or no so the shape is lanceolate diplococci next important thing is that for a, when i was teaching you staining methods i told you one thing that surrounding the bacteria if you have a capsule can you stain a capsule yes batao can you stain a capsule no very good very good you cannot stain a capsule what you can stain you can stain the bacteria you can stain the medium surrounding the bacteria but capsule you cannot stain that kind of that kind of staining method what was the staining method called as negative ink staining method very detailedly we discussed the mechanism of that previously itself okay so that kind of staining method is called negative so here this is encapsulated this is encapsulated so when it is encapsulated the capsule cannot be stained capsule cannot be stained so this kind of staining method you called as negative ink staining method negative staining so for negative staining we use two different types of inks what are the two very good nikos nishoka very good two different types of inks we use one is called as indian ink one is called as indian ink another one is called as negrosin what is indian ink indian ink is cheap negrosin is the best ink okay so this is one method through which we do the staining method this is one method what is the second method we use what is the second method we basically use is that what we do is you take bacteria hai na abhi is bacteria jo tumne liya in this there might be capsulated bacteria there might be unencapsulated bacteria 
Okay. Now I take serum. Serum contains what? Antibodies. What does serum contain? Antibodies. Now I will add serum here. When I add serum here, antibodies will go and attach to capsule. Agar capsule hai, to antibodies ja ke kya It will go and attach to capsule. Once it will attach to capsule, it will cause swelling of the capsule. Here all of you, look at this picture here. Bacteria dekho kahan pe hai aur capsule dekho kitna swell ho gaya. Look at the capsule, how well it is swollen. See, look at this bacteria over here. This is the bacteria in the center. And this entirely is a swollen capsule. Here dekho. This entirely is a swollen capsule. But look at this. This bacteria is not having a capsule. It means this is an unencapsulated bacteria. So such kind of reaction you call it as where swelling of the capsule is happening. This is called as quilling reaction. Here the wording same, na? quilling, swelling, right? So just remember it as this reaction is called as Quilling reaction, quilling reaction. In quilling reaction, what is happening? There is swelling of the capsule. There is swelling of the capsule in case of quilling reaction. Okay. What is happening? There is quelling of the swelling of the capsule in case of quilling reaction. So two things you use. One is called as a negative straining. Another one is called as a swelling of the capsule. Clear? So if this picture will come in the exam, will you answer it guys? Yes or no? If you see this picture, will you answer it? Isn't it easy? Streptococcus pneumonia, right? Very good. Now, you are telling me that this is alpha hemolysis. Yes. Now, when you wanted to grow this bacteria on a blood agar, abhi ye hemolysis kya hai? Alpha hemolysis, beta and gamma hemolysis. Where are you doing this hemolysis on? Which agar are you doing? You are doing it on blood agar. I hope you remember what is blood agar. I know I also taught you how to prepare blood agar, how to prepare chocolate agar also, right? So on the blood agar, you do this. Now on the blood agar, if you wanted to grow streptococcus, listen carefully, on the blood agar, if you wanted to grow streptococcus pneumonia, what kind of colonies which will you see? Yeah, they go. Look at this. This is how I see this is, these are the colonies I see of streptococcus which are going on the blood agar. Now look at these colonies and tell that aren't these colonies looking like a carom coin appearance? Caroms, all of you know, you have played caroms I think in your childhood. So they are looking like a carom coin appearance. Very good. So if from today onwards, if I ask you carom coin appearance is seen in, you have to tell that streptococcus pneumonia growing on blood agar will appear as if it is a carom coin appearance. Okay. So, carom coin appearance, carom coin appearance. So, where do you see this carom coin appearance? Carom coin appearance is seen in streptococcus pneumonia. Okay. Now, another name is also given for this. Other name is Drotsman appearance. Another name that is given is Drotsman appearance. So there are two important names that are given. One is called as your carom coin appearance and the other one is called as what? It is called as your Drotsman appearance. So this is a very, 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 very important question. Very, very important question. Now, what are the MCQs? First MCQ, shape. What is the shape? Second MCQ, how do you stain? Third MCQ, uh, what is the appearance on uh, blood agar? Now, fourth MCQ is that what are the complete clinical manifestations which you see regarding this uh, streptococcus pneumonia? Okay, just remember the mnemonic TOPI. T O P I TOPI. Okay, all of you might be thinking streptococcus pneumonia will cause pneumonia, but not only pneumonia, it will even cause problems to the brain also. Keep that thing in mind. T stands for T stands for T coic acid. T stands for T-coic acid. This bacteria, this bacteria is having T-coic acid in its cell wall. Okay. This bacteria is having what? It is having T-coic acid in cell wall. So, kya? This T-coic acid will cause meningitis. This T-coic acid will cause meningitis. Meningitis. Okay. Next important thing. O stands for otitis media. O stands for otitis 
media. What is otitis media? Infection of the middle ear is called as otitis media. Okay, infection of middle ear is called otitis media. Next, P stands for pneumolysin O. Pneumolysin O. What is pneumolysin O? Pneumolysin O is a toxin that is released by this bacteria. And you know what does pneumolysin? Pneumo matlab kya lungs. Lysin matlab kya lysis. It will break down your alveolar membranes. Okay. Lungs ka jo epithelium hota hai na. Lungs ka jo membranes honge na. All these membranes are broken down by pneumolysin O. And final important thing is IgA protease. What is the use of this IgA protease? Whenever a bacteria is entering into your mouth, within your saliva, there are barriers. All of you know skin is a barrier, saliva is a barrier, mucus is a barrier, you have studied, right? So whenever a bacteria is entering into your mouth, within your saliva, you have got IgA. Okay, IgA is a barrier. What IgA will do? IgA will kill down that bacteria. But... What bacteria will do? Bacteria will release IgA protease enzyme. This IgA protease enzyme will kill down this IgA. Will destroy this IgA. Ek bar agar IgA destroy hua, do you think in the mouth, in the, in the oral region, is there anyone to stop this bacteria? No. So bacteria will happily colonize. Colonize matlab, it will stay there. It keeps on dividing in the mouth. Okay. So, what is the use of IgA protease? Very important question. IgA protease is useful for colonization. Colonization of bacteria in the pharynx. Colonization of bacteria in the pharynx. This is a very, 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 very important question. Guys, right? still here, are you understanding? You might get a doubt. You might get a doubt, sir. Ye pneumonia hai, fine. Okay. Okay, this is pneumonia. You are telling me it is having, it will cause pneumonia, streptococcus pneumonia will cause pneumonia. I will agree. But I can't understand why streptococcus pneumonia is going to brain. Why streptococcus pneumonia is going to ear? Why it should go to the ear? A very simple thing here. Don't write it. Again, I'm telling, don't write it. Just watch here. All of you look here now, anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa, posterior cranial fossa, right? Let us say this is your beautiful brain, which you rarely use. So let us also tell that this is the nasopharynx, oropharynx. This is the thing. And all of you know, let me rub this part over here. All of you know that here you have your beautiful ears, right? Now, if I'm taking the ear here, this part over here is called as your what? What is this part called as? This is called as your middle ear, you remember? Now, you know, if from anatomy, if you remember anatomy, from middle ear, middle ear ka anterior wall hai, hai na? From the anterior wall of middle ear, you see a tube that is connecting like this. This tube is called as eustachian tube. You studied it, hai na? Now, what is this bacteria? Streptococcus pneumonia. Now, streptococcus pneumonia will enter into your pharynx. Yaha pe. It is entering into your pharynx. Now, don't you think, obviously, it will go down to the lungs. But don't you think there is a chance that it will go through the eustachian tube and enter into the middle ear? Once if it will enter into the middle ear, it will cause what? Otitis media. Agar middle ear ke andar infection jada ho gaya, then what will happen? It will break open the superior wall. Superior wall of the middle ear is called tegment wall. It will break open the superior wall and bacteria will go into the brain and cause meningitis. I hope this is clear. Just for an explanation purpose, I told you, not, not that important here. Just remember this TOPI, that will be enough. Okay. Next, next important uh, thing you need to know over here is that whenever a patient is coughing, what kind of sputum will you see? Okay. You see, this is the characteristic sputum that you see in case of streptococcus pneumonia. That is a resty colored sputum. What is this? Resty colored sputum. Resty colored sputum. Any patient who is coming to you telling you that doctor, I have very severe cough, I have fever and all, right? Now you have to ask cough productive hai ki dry cough. If he will tell productive cough, you should ask 
what is the color of the sputum color of the sputum is red color of the sputum is colorless color of the sputum is rusty color of the sputum is green these things you will study in medicine i don't want to discuss in detail right now but uh, one thing i'm telling you rusty colored sputum you see in case of streptococcus pneumonia bas yahan tak yaad karo we are we don't want to deviate more into the medical part now so you are telling streptococcus pneumonia causes meningitis yes it causes meningitis now tell me streptococcus pneumonia causes meningitis in which age group it will cause meningitis in children it will cause meningitis in adults it will cause meningitis in elderly also if you look at the meningitis very 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 important table and very confusing what i have done is that from the entire microbiology wherever meningitis cases are there all of them i have gathered and put it here now okay so meningitis in children in adults and in elderly in children in adults in elderly okay if you look at meningitis in children meningitis in children is caused by three important bacteria how do you remember that you remember it by the mnemonic sin s i n s stands for streptococcus pneumonia streptococcus pneumonia next i stands for influenza hemophilus influenza hemophilus influenza n stands for neisseria meningitis neisseria meningitis so these are the three organisms which will cause uh, meningitis in children very important guys ye table kuch bhi kar lo rat lo whatever you do remember this table at any cost okay now why because the same table will be repeated in pediatrics also when it comes to adults in adults it is caused mainly by two important organisms what are those two important organisms one is uh, neisseria meningitis and next one is streptococcus pneumonia okay when it comes to elderly elderly also it is caused by three important organisms one is streptococcus pneumonia staph aureus staphylococcus aureus and e coli e coli okay e coli now all of you all of you very good anand prakash very good now all of you look here one key difference you should know children may streptococcus pneumonia is cause adults may be streptococcus pneumonia hai or elderly also there is streptococcus pneumonia so streptococcus pneumonia is the most important one to cause meningitis in all age groups clear all of you so this particular table is a high highly 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 important table very 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 important okay keep this thing in mind don't forget it right till here you are all clear i think now let us go to the treatment part what is the treatment you basically give to the patient okay there are there are two different types of treatment you give for example basically we give pen guys till here you understood all of you everyone be fast very good very good very good so what is the treatment you basically give is that for example let us say obviously you give antibiotics like penicillins only but some bacteria are very sensitive to penicillins matlab susceptible to penicillins they listen to penicillins but some bacteria they don't listen to penicillins so who listen to penicillin are called as penicillin penicillin susceptible those who don't listen are called as penicillin resistant penicillin resistant so there are two groups of organisms penicillin susceptible and penicillin resistant when it comes to penicillin susceptible you give penicillin obviously penicillin susceptible ko penicillin hi doge or you can give third generation cephalosporin third generation cephalosporins when it is penicillin resistant you give vancomycin you remember vancomycin we also give in case of mrsa methicillin resistant uh, staph aureus mein vancomycin dete the yaad hai okay fine this is uh, regarding the streptococcus pneumonia 
specifically for otitis media when patient has otitis media specifically you give an antibiotic called amoxicillin amoxicillin this is mcq remember this thing okay now what we will do is that what we will do is that we discussed about streptococcus pneumonia most of the questions are asked on streptococcus pneumonia the only uh, few questions which are asked from viridian streptococci i will discuss now how I will do is that I will compare both of them. Pneumonia ectaraf, viridian streptococci. On the other hand, I will compare both of them and I will write it down. Okay? Now, if you compare pneumococcus, pneumococcus matlab streptococcus pneumonia. Okay? Streptococcus. Uh, Raj, aise koi zaruri nahi hai. Azithromycin, where do you use? You can use for H influenza, any bacteria you can use. Okay? So it is not a drug of choice, particularly you can use for, you can use, yes, Anand, you can use that. Okay. You can use. So pneumo, pneumococcus and strepto, streptococcus viridens. Coming to bile solubility. What do you mean by bile solubility? Bile solubility in the sense, just look at this. All of you look at this. For example, for example, I have kept streptococcus pneumonia into this. Streptococcus pneumonia into this. Mene bile liya. Two test tubes I have taken bile. Now in one test tube, I have added streptococcus pneumonia. What will the bile do? The bile will cause lysis of this streptococcus pneumonia. Streptococcus pneumonia is lysed by the bile. If it is getting lysed by the bile, matlab ye bile soluble hai ki bile insoluble hai. Batao. If lysis is happening, if bile is able to lysis this streptococcus pneumonia, bile soluble. When it comes to the other one, like viridian streptococci, it is not lysed by the bile. It is not lysed by the bile. Okay. Now you might get it out, sir. Yape mitis kya likha hai? Aap to, you are telling streptococcus viridens and you are telling it is mitis. If you remember it in the starting classes, I told you. Whenever you are making a lot of sound, you might mute songs. Yaad hai ye mnemonic? You might. When you are making a lot of noise, you might mute songs. Might matlab kya streptococcus mitis. Mute matlab kya streptococcus mutants. S matlab kya streptococcus sanguis. Streptococcus sanguis. Okay. All these three, they come under streptococcus viridens. All these three, they come under streptococcus viridens only. So if you look at the bile solubility, Right. Happy tea for all of you. If you look at the bile solubility, pneumococcus is bile soluble. Pneumococcus is bile soluble. Whereas streptococcus viridens is bile insoluble. First thing, okay. Second thing, inulin fermentation. Inulin kya hota hai? Inulin is like a starch. In your fruits, in bananas and all of these, you have this inulin. Can I ferment inulin? Can this bacteria ferment inulin or no? Ye dekho. Look at this. It is positive, it is control. Control matlab negative, it couldn't. Positive matlab, it is able to ferment inulin. Negative matlab, it looks colorless in this way. It is unable to perform inulin, uh, ferment inulin. Same concept we have applied somewhere. Ferment, non-ferment. Kaha pe apply kiya? Just think and tell me very fastly. Very good, Nidhi. Very good. Very good, very good. You remember we discussed lactose tolerant, lactose intolerant, lactose. What is that agar name? Anyone? Agar ka naam batao. Which agar will differentiate? The agar that is differentiating lactose tolerance from in lactose intolerance. In I have also told you the examples like there is some bacteria that is very good. Mekonki agar. Okay. Mac agar very important in uh, MBBS most of the in most of the topics right you come across this Mac agar so keep this thing in mind very good so the same concept is applying over here which is bile soluble which is bile insoluble so here it is inulin positive which means it ferments inulin it doesn't ferment inulin okay so it ferments inulin over here it does not ferment inulin. 
वेन इट कम्स टू ऑप्टोचिन सेंसिटिविटी हमने ऑलरेडी डिस्कस किया स्टार्टिंग में इट इज ऑप्टोचिन सेंसिटिव इट इज ऑप्टोचिन रेसिस्टेंट विच इज ऑप्टोचिन सेंसिटिव ओके न्यूमोकोकस इज ऑप्टोचिन सेंसिटिव और रेसिस्टेंट वेरी गुड वेरी गुड वेरी वेरी गुड वेरी गुड right so guys till here we are done with streptococcus pneumonia all of you understood before we go on to the questions jaldi batao fada fad very fast perfectly clear very good let us do this question which was repeated previously and let us see really you understood or not 60 year old man presents with fever and cough counts a cough he is having productive cough productive cough of which color rusty colored sputum you see patient is having what rusty colored sputum and is diagnosed with community acquired pneumonia community just give me so fever and cough what kind of cough patient is having productive cough and uh, the sputum is rusty colored sputum and is diagnosed with community acquired pneumonia okay usually the pneumonias which we get are community acquired pneumonia the cause is don't hunt for answers mai wohi bolu never ever hunt for an answer most of the time it will go wrong the causative organism is isolated gram stain is shown in the figure 1 ye dekho this is a figure 1 Now in this figure, what did we understand? It is in the form of a chain. So, its का मतलब क्या है? This is streptococcus, right? And look here, what is the shape? Diplococci, isn't it? Lanceolate diplococci shape. Yes or no? Lanceolate diplococci. Very good. Sir, what is this red color thing? Red color thing यही होगा कि whenever this bacteria, listen carefully, whenever this bacteria is entering into your lungs. and it is releasing pneumolysin o what did i tell you pneumolysin o will destroy your uh, lung epithelium it will destroy your capillaries so don't you think patient will have blood over there and when he is coughing the sputum there will be little bit of blood so this is the blood that is seen in the sputum clear this is because of pneumolysin o no one will ask you that deeply don't worry so which of the following batao answer batao abhi what will be the answer everyone Very good, Nishoka. Only Anand Prakash is answering. Nidhi Jain, very good. Very good. What will be the answer? Answer three. Catalase negative. Alpha hemolytic. Optocin sensitive. Sultan. बीटा हिमोलेटिक नहीं ये यू आर टेलिंग इट इज ऑप्शन टू नॉट ऑप्शन टू ये देखो इट इज नॉट बीटा हिमोलेटिक इट इज अल्फा हिमोलाइसिस ओके राइट नाउ लेट अस गो ऑन टू अनदर ग्रुप ऑफ बैक्टीरिया अनदर ग्रुप ऑफ बैक्टीरिया दैट इज कॉल्ड एज योर ग्राम नेगेटिव बैक्टीरिया एंड इन दिस ग्राम नेगेटिव बैक्टीरिया वी शैल डिस्कस समथिंग कॉल्ड एज डिप्लोकोकाइ डिप्लोकोकाइ okay now this diplococci is divided into two types based upon maltose guys maltose lactose all of these are sugars if you are able to ferment these sugars maltose fermenter lactose fermenter not able to lactose non fermenter maltose non fermenter okay so based upon maltose based upon maltose we are dividing this organism into maltose fermenter non maltose fermenter that is neisseria meningitis neisseria meningitis and neisseria gonorrhea neisseria gonorrhea now i am telling you openly right from neisseria meningitis from neisseria gonorrhea in microbiology 100% 100 i am writing it also 100% one question will definitely be asked every year one question is definitely asked from this topic every year see openly i am writing it 100% one question is asked listen very carefully don't miss any point 
first point you should not miss is it is diplococci. Okay, it is diplococci. Shape of meningitis is different. Shape of gonorrhea is different. Second question you need to know is it is maltose fermenter, it is non-maltose fermenter. Sir, you, to remember it easily, how do you remember this? How do you remember this is that? Let us say this is maltose fermenter. Let us say this is glucose fermenter. Maltose fermenter and glucose fermenter. Here we have got meningococci. Here we have got gonococci. Gonococci, right? Now you guys tell me, meningococci is firm, does it ferment maltose and glucose or only one? Batao. Very good, very good, very good, very good. All of you look here. Now, in meningococci, we have got M. M stands for what? Maltose fermenter, so that is positive. Next, we have got G. G, st G stands for what? Glucose fermenter, so that is also positive. Okay? But if you look at gonococci, do you have M? You don't have M. What do you have? You have got only G. So, glucose fermenter, it is not maltose fermenter. Easy. Everyone understood this? Perfectly clear, right? Very good. Now, if you look at the differences between meningococci and gonococci, first very important difference is that meningococcus is capsulated. Meningococcus is what? Capsulated. Here we have got gonococcus. This is non-capsulated. Capsule nahi hai pe. Non-capsulated. Okay. Second important thing, if you look at meningococci, meningococci is like this. What is the shape? Lens shape. What is the shape? It is lens shape. If you look at gonococci, what is gonococci looking like? Gonococci starting letter is G. G also looks in this way. What is this? This is kidney. So what is the shape? Kidney shaped. I will show you in the pictures. Don't worry. Just write it down now. So kidney shape. Lens shape and this is kidney shape. Third important question is, you already know that this particular meningococci is going to ferment both maltose and glucose. So it ferments maltose and glucose. Whereas gonococci only glucose. Only glucose. Only glucose. Okay. Fourth important thing, when it comes to the vaccine part, okay, do you have vaccine for meningococci? We have a vaccine for meningococci. Regarding this vaccine in little bit detail, I will go in a minute. But for now, what you need to know is that the vaccine is called as quadrivalent, quadrivalent meningococcal, quadrivalent meningococcal polysaccharide vaccine. Polysaccharide vaccine. But this naam yaad rakho. Even if you don't remember, that is fine. Just remember it as, I've told you something called as quadrivalent vaccine. Okay? Why it is quadrivalent? I'll come back to you. Now, when it comes to gonococci, do you have vaccines against this gonococci? Batao, guys. Jaldi batao. Do you have vaccines against this gonococci? Very good, Anand. You don't have any vaccine against this gonococci. Why do you don't have any vaccines against this gonococci? Because of antigenic variation. Antigenic variation. Ye antigenic variation hota kya hai? See, the act, what is vaccine? How do you prepare vaccine, guys? You prepare vaccine based upon the antigen. Bacteria is having an antigen. Against that antigen, you listen carefully. Everyone listen carefully. Not all of you don't know this answer. Only few know the answer here. Few know the meaning of antigenic variation. So all of you look here. Let us say there is a bacteria. This bacteria is having antigen in this way. Okay. Now, based upon the shape, structure and all, I make a vaccine. Now, another bacteria is having an antigen like this. Now, this antigen is different from this antigen. Yes or no? So, against this, a different antigen will be uh, synthesized. But, go to this gonococci. Gonococci has antigenic variation. Matlab, abhi, when you look, the antigen is like this. After some time, when you look, the antigen is like this. After some time, when you look, the antigen is bending back, 
After some time, when you look, the antigen is like this. So it means antigen keeps on changing the position. So when it keeps on changing the position, you cannot make a proper vaccine against that. That is what is called as antigenic variation. Very, very important because of antigenic variation. Okay. Fifth important point, differentiating point. This is capsulated. This is capsulated. This is non-capsulated. already. Already humne likh liya. Okay. We have already written this point. Capsulated, non-capsulated. But ye dekho guys. When I told capsulated over here, when I told capsulated over here, you know what kind of capsule it is having? Capsule is made up of what, you know? Capsule is made up of polysaccharide. Capsule is made up of polysaccharide. Right. Coming, show the shape of this. Yeah, they go. This is the diplococci. This is the diplococci over here. Show the shape of this one. You see, it is in the form of a kidney shape. Right? You're getting it? See, it is in the form of what? A kidney shaped ba bacteria. So, this particular kidney shaped bacteria over here is nothing but called as your gonococci. Till here, everyone is clear. Jaldi batao, fada fad. Fastly, we have to finish up this. Perfectly clear, everyone. Very good. All the 55 members are clear. Chelsea is in the class. Arbina is in the very good. Shravya, Shravya is in the class. Yeah. Very good, Sharad. All of you understood, right? Right. Now, when it comes to Neseria meningitis, first we shall discuss about Neseria meningitis over here. Coming to this Neseria meningitis, what is the medium you use? Either wo Neseria meningitis hai or gonococci hai. What is the medium you use, guys? You remember I told you there are, there are specific mediums. For example, if I want to grow only Neseria meningitis or gonococci, I, I select such type of medium and that is called as selective media. Media mein mein bataya tha. Then what will you do to kill down the remaining? You use antibiotics. So, Neseria meningitis and gonococci to grow both of them. The medium which we use is Thayer Martin media. I also gave you the mnemonic. Martin has Nessi Martin has meningitis and gonorrhea, right? So medium here is. Raj, your understanding. Thayer Martin medium. Thayer Martin media is what? Thayer Martin media is a selective media. Selective media. Okay, it is a selective media. When it comes to the virulence factors, you know what are virulence factors now, right? What are virulence factors? These are the weapons that are taken up by the bacteria. Here they go. This is the diplococci. Okay, surrounding this, there is a capsule. Yes or no? Yes, we have got capsule. Here they go. Here capsule. Okay. Now on the surface of capsule, we have got some important virulence factors like this. Right. What are these structures over here? First important thing, first important thing is that whenever this bacteria is entering into your body, it should attach to your body host cells. First of all, there are two types of attachment. Ek hai temporary attachment or ek hai very strong attachment. Okay. Ek hai temporary attachment. One is called very strong attachments. Okay. So what are these? These are called as pili. What are pili responsible for? Pili are responsible for meanwhile attachment. Matlab, a temporary attachment. Ke liye. Okay. After that, you see this protein over here, pink color one. This is called as OPA protein. What is OPA protein? OPA protein in the sense opacity protein. Okay. There are two types of OPA protein. OPA, OPC protein. OPA, OPC. These are opacity proteins. Abhi ye OPA protein pata? You know what is the use of this OPA protein for tight attachment? Ye yaad rakho. OPA protein is responsible for tight adhesion or tight attachment to the host cell. Okay? To the host cell. Next important thing, where is the capsule? This is a capsule. This is the capsule. What kind of capsule is this? This is a polysaccharide capsule. 
fine why are you writing it why it is called as a virulence factor because opa opc matlab opacity a opacity c op proteins matlab opacity proteins opacity opacity proteins okay so poly capsule ka use kya hai capsule i told you in the starting wherever there is capsule capsule prevents phagocytosis so capsule is anti phagocytic if you remember it i have already discussed this anti phagocytic capsule is what anti phagocytic and finally finally ye hoga ki you know what is this thing over here you remember the concept when i was discussing endotoxins yaad hai endotoxins mein i was discussing what what i was discussing all these endotoxins here together are grouped in lipopolysaccharide बट ये लाइपोपोलीसेक्राइड नहीं है दिस इज लाइपो ऑलिगोसेक्राइड लाइपो ऑलिगोसेक्राइड वॉट इज लाइपो ऑलिगोसेक्राइड इट इज ऑल्सो एन एंडोटॉक्सिन बट इट इज अ स्ट्रॉगर एंडोटॉक्सिन इट इज अ स्ट्रॉन्ग एंडोटॉक्सिन स्ट्रॉन्ग एंडोटॉक्सिन इज कॉल्ड एज लाइपो ऑलिगोसेक्राइड याद रखो स्ट्रॉन्ग एंडोटॉक्सिन इज कॉल्ड एज लाइपो ऑलिगोसेक्राइड and what is the next important virulence factor iga protease i won't tell you this thing because you already know iga protease kya karega the enzyme is released and it will break down your iga molecules in the mouth you are getting it so with the help of iga protease just now i told you it is responsible for colonization of the bacteria you remember that very good So, कहां पे देखते हैं हम आईजीए प्रोटीएस इन टू इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स वन इज स्टेप्टोकोकस निमोनिया हीमोफिलस इंफ्लुएंजा एंड आल्सो दिस नेसेरिया हियर एवरीवन इज क्लियर परफेक्टली क्लियर टिल हियर यू आर क्लियर बिफोर आई गो टू द क्लिनिकल मैनिफेस्टेशन क्या हो गया बाकी <laughs> Which one you want me to explain, Pravika? Which one you want me to explain? Virulence factors. See, if this bacteria is entering into your body, pili are responsible for attachment. It has to attach to your host cells. This is called loose attachment. OPA proteins are responsible for tight attachment to the bacteria. Polysaccharide capsule, I told you already, anti phagocytic. No phagocyte will come and uh, engulf this bacteria. Lipo oligosaccharide in the sense it starts releasing what stronger endotoxin. Lipo polysaccharide is endotoxin. Lipo oligosaccharide is a strong endotoxin. and it will release an enzyme called as iga protease because iga molecules are in your mouth killing down the bacteria so this iga protease will kill down that iga molecules okay these are the things now coming to theek hai fine i can understand aaj biryani hai at least let me complete this and send you okay <laughs> at least complete let me complete this and send you theek hai are you all with me एवरीवन खत्म हो जाएगा अभी ऐसे बोल रहे हो कि यू गाइस आर लिविंग इन ए थार डेजर्ट वेर रेयरली द चिकन कम क्वैक क्वैक यू गो ईट देम इन अ वीक हाउ मेनी टाइम्स यू हैव चिकन गाइस देयर बहुत बार मिलेगा आप लोगों को इफ यू गो टू द फ्लैट एवरी डे यू कैन कुक एंड ईट अकबर right so clinical manifestations clinical manifestations coming to the clinical manifestations <laughs> if they ask me why did you leave the class early you know this class is been monitored from delhi also 
immediately i will get a message why i why did you leave the class early now should i tell students want to eat biryani so i left <laughs> when you guys come to hyderabad come to my home so that i'll make a biryani for you okay right so coming to the clinical manifestations what are the different kinds of clinical manifestations which you would see over here so just look here very fastly See how fast I'm drawing because I have to send you guys for biryani. Right. So, so all of you look here now. Uh, within this, what are the different kinds of clinical manifestations? The first important clinical manifestation is that you see a bacteria. This bacteria basically through, uh, let us say the oral or mostly through the respiratory droplets, this bacteria is right now here. Okay. Now this bacteria has to attach to the host cell like this. How it will attach? It will attach by pili. It will attach with the help of opia protein. Pili, loose attachment, opia protein, tight attachment. After that, what will happen is that this bacteria right now will enter into this diplococci, Neisseria meningitis will enter into your bloodstream. From the bloodstream, it is going to enter into your brain. And once it enters into your brain, what is going to happen? It is going to damage your brain. So this is what is called as meningitis. Actually, there will be meningitis, meningoencephalitis also. The question that is asked is, what is the most severe form? What is the most severe form of Neisseria meningitis? Meningitis is the most severe form. Second important thing. Second important thing, these things are not taught in micro. Keep this thing in mind. Second important thing is that this particular bacteria, this particular bacteria is traveling all the way in the blood and it is coming down. If you can see here, it is coming down. It is entering into your uh, uh, renal artery. Renal artery, it is going like this and depositing on your adrenal gland. Once it deposits on the adrenal gland, it will destroy the adrenal gland. Destroy matlab, itna severe destruction hoga ki, it will even cause hemorrhage of your adrenal gland. Okay. This hemorrhage of adrenal gland is called as Waterhouse Frederick syndrome. What is this? Waterhouse Frederickson syndrome. So it would cause hemorrhage bilateral on both the sides, right? Bilateral adrenal gland hemorrhage bilateral adrenal gland hemorrhage so this bilateral adrenal gland hemorrhage is what is given the second name that is called as water house ye yaad rakho guys water house frederickson syndrome water house frederickson syndrome which is also called as bilateral bilateral yes it is common anand bilateral water house uh, bilateral adrenal gland hemorrhage. Now coming to the third important thing. What did I tell you? This is going to release a stronger endotoxin that is called as lipo oligosaccharide. Normally guys, when I was teaching you topic of endotoxin, you, when I was teaching the topic of endotoxin, what did I tell you? It will cause three important things. One is fever, one is shock, another one is disseminated intravascular coagulation. Long back I told you in the first second class I think. So here also it would cause those things, disseminated intravascular coagulation, fever, and shock. All of them are caused by what? All of them are caused by this endotoxin. All of them are caused by this endotoxin. So if someone is asking you what are the clinical manifestations, most severe clinical manifestation is meningitis. Most important complication, a very important complication, hai. the most important complication is this bacteria will go destroy the adrenal gland. Agar adrenal gland destroy hua, if the adrenal gland is destroyed, this condition you call it as bilateral adrenal gland hemorrhage. That is also given a name, Waterhouse Fredrickson syndrome. 
सो गाइज अगर फिजियोलॉजी आप लोगों को खत्म हुआ राइट इन फिजियोलॉजी यू हैव स्टडीड एड्रीनल कॉटेक्स इज हैविंग थ्री लेयर्स राइट जोना रेटिकुलरिस जोना ग्लोमेरुलोजा जोना फेसिकुलेटा राइट रेटिकुलरिस विल रिलीज सेक्स हार्मोन्स लाइक एंड्रोजेंस जोना ग्लोमेरुलोजा विल रिलीज व्हाट कॉर्टिसोल जोना फेसिकुलेटा विल रिलीज व्हाट इट वुड रिलीज मिनरलोकॉर्टिकॉइड्स लाइक अल्डोस्टेरोन राइट all these three synthesis will be stopped suddenly okay so these things will happen in the patient so if someone is asking you most important complication of neisseria meningitis is this waterhouse frederick syndrome now i am come now i am discussing the last fourth important thing most common presentation most common presentation kya hoga rash most common presentation kya hoga rash most severe presentation kya hoga meningitis मोस्ट सीवियर कॉम्प्लिकेशन क्या होगा वाटर हाउस सिंड्रोम ओके रैश मतलब ये देखो दिस टाइप ऑफ रैश यू सी दिस टाइप ऑफ रैश यू कॉल इट एज हेमोरेजिक रैश हेमोरेजिक रैश सर ये रैश कहां पे दिखता है दिस रैश इज कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फॉर मेनिंगो कोकल डिसीज ओनली फॉर मेनिंजाइटिस ओनली वही पे ये रैश देखते हो Other than this, you won't see this meningococcal rash anywhere else. Okay, keep that thing in mind. The last point before we finish up this topic is, ah, uh, let us discuss about polysaccharide capsule here. The capsule is made up of polysaccharide. मैंने बताया था ना? So polysaccharide capsule. Now you might answer, you might get a doubt. Color won't be different. Color is the same. Color is the same. Now you might get it out when it comes to polysaccharide capsule. How many types of polysaccharide capsules are present in this bacteria? There are thirteen zero groups. You call them as zero groups. Thirteen zero groups. Out of this thirteen zero groups, which zero groups will cause a disease to you? Zero group A, zero group B, zero group C, zero group W, zero group Y. How many are there? Five zero groups. Five zero groups are responsible for causing disease. Now you are telling that, sir, these are the five zero groups out of thirteen which will cause very dangerous diseases. So what I will do is I will start preparing vaccine against these five zero groups. मतलब against zero group A I will prepare a vaccine against B against C against W also I will prepare a vaccine. But yes, you can prepare a vaccine. But remember one thing: you cannot prepare a vaccine against zero group B. There is no vaccine against zero group B. But there is vaccine against zero group A, C, W, Y. Okay? How many zero groups you are preparing vaccine? You are preparing a single vaccine which will act against four zero groups. That is why you call this vaccine as what? You call it as quadrivalent meningococcal polysaccharide vaccine. All of you understood now why you call it as quadrivalent. मेनिंगोकोकल वैक्सीन एवरीवन जल्दी बताओ ऑल ऑफ यू अंडरस्टूड दिस वेरी गुड सो डू दिस क्वेश्चन एंड यू आर फ्री ए फिफ्टीन इयर ओल्ड फीमेल इज ब्रॉड टू द इमरजेंसी रूम विथ हाई फीवर ये देखो हाई फीवर एंड कंफ्यूजन है हाई फीवर एंड कंफ्यूजन विल बी इन एवरी डिजीज राइट शी कंप्लेन ऑफ छिल्स एंड माई आलजर्स एंड फिजिकल एग्जामिनेशन रिविल्स पेटीकियल रैश ये देखो इस टाइप ऑफ रैश को हम बोलते हैं पेटिकियल रैश और हेमोरेजिक रैश ओके सो पेटिकियल बायोप्सी वहां से बायोप्सी लिया बायोप्सी रिवील्स ग्राम नेगेटिव डिप्लोकोकस ग्राम नेगेटिव डिप्लोकोकस कौन सा हो सकता है आइदर देर कैन बी मेनिंजाइटिस और देर कैन बी गोनोरिया बट गोनोरिया में रिलेटेड टू सेक्शुअली रिलेटेड प्रॉब्लम होगा Like burning urination, ure urethra se discharge ho raha hai, right? All these things we did not see any of these things. The patient is at a greatest risk. Badam, who will tell me the answer? Uh, Himanshika, rashes are present in every disease, but hemorrhagic. This kind of hemorrhagic rash is mainly seen in this kind of cases. Okay. Very good, all of you. Bilateral adrenal gland destruction. Okay, so all of you understood everything I taught today. कल बिरयानी है, चिकन है, मटन है अगर ऐसे कुछ बोला, ऐसे कुछ भी नहीं होगा, समझा?
चाहे तो एक काम करो टेल यूर फ्रेंड टू सेंड अ फोटो ऑफ दैट चिकन बिरयानी और ऑर्डर सामने रखो और क्लास सुनो ठीक है तो डू दैट थिंग गाइज यू नो आई अपलोड दिस वीडियो ऑन यूट्यूब फिफ्टी थाउजेंड सब्सक्राइबर्स आर देर ऑन यूट्यूब पीपल वॉच पीपल फ्रॉम डिफरेंट डिफरेंट कंट्रीज दे वॉच एंड इफ दे लिजन टू आवर कन्वर्सेशन बिरयानी की वजह से क्लास कैंसिल हो रहे एक गजब बेच दी होगा मैं बोल रहा हूँ they keep on creating memes right ha edit mai wohi karte baithunga i don't have any other work daily in the morning you keep on putting all the kachra in the video i keep on editing yahi hai mera kaam hai na Hello guys so all of you understood all the things which we have discussed today everything my youtube channel name dr krishna lectures you will find it here subscribe kar lo theek hai hello guys so take care goodbye and have a very healthy biryani love you all